Let me tell you the story of Anna and Sophie. Anna is an eight-year-old girl living in Amsterdam. She's once dreaming to become a doctor. But lately, she's not feeling very well. She's experiencing weird headaches. And her parents are taking her to the best hospital of the country. At the same time, there's Sophie, same age, but she's living in the rural countryside of Spain. And her parents are taking her to a local regional hospital. Both girls are diagnosed with the same rare brain tumor. The doctor said, take your girl home and let her live the last month with her family because there's nothing that we can do. One day later, the mother of Anna went back to the doctor. And she said, I don't want to know what her chance of dying is. I want to know her chance of survival is. And the doctor said, well, she had a 96% death rate. Go home. But the mother believed in miracles. And one day later, there was a visiting doctor from the US. And he said, we're trialing a drug, and your cult can enter. And Anna survived. For Sophie, there was no visiting doctor from the US. Her parents started searching online, like we all would do. But where do you start? Because it's like surging a needle in a haystack. And some six months later, Sophie died. As a global society, we failed to save Sophie. This shows the huge inequality of access to knowledge. To save Sophie. We believe, we think to believe, that we're living in a global connector world. But this shows it is not so. I've heard these kind of stories since the age of four. I'm born and raised in a medical family specialized in genomics. And I witnessed firsthand that there was more knowledge to save lives. Every day, my father told me stories about his patients many of them about parents losing a child, and typically young people in their 30s, 40s, who suddenly pass away. And there was always this sentence, if only we did know, if only we did know, we could have prevented this. That means that millions of Sophies are dying because of a lack of access to knowledge. And as a child, I wondered, why, if there is more knowledge to solve diseases, why can people not access this knowledge? Why do people first need to lose someone they love? And why does it seem that no one is doing something to change? So that became part of my mission. At the age of 23, I became a neuroscientist, specialized in genomics, first in the Netherlands, then I worked at the Harvard Stem Cell Institute, and became a public health policy advisor to World Health Organization and Peking University. I've seen underserved populations, people that we cannot diagnose their disease based on the local knowledge in the hospital, I've seen people living in extreme poverty, people who cannot access healthcare. But at the same time, I also discovered the rise of exponential technologies and how these technologies empower us to access knowledge. So let me tell you another story. Seven years ago, my friend Christian's daughter, Lika, was diagnosed with a terminal disease caused by genetic mutation. And the doctors just gave up all hope. But Christian, deep inside he knew that there would be more information. So he took his daughter from the hospital and he started asking his entire network to search with them. And eventually, after a long search in the dark, 
that connects it with parents, with children, with the same disease. And by connecting, they found a treatment that saved her life. And this shows the power of global connectivity. The power of sharing stories and connecting knowledge on a global scale to save lives. Because maybe somewhere at the other side of the country or the other side of the world, there's more information. There's someone walking, carrying around with the key to unravel our diseases. And this inspired me because if Christine could do this for his daughter, imagine what we can do for millions of other people. And this is where technology comes in. Our lives are already shaped by the fourth industrial revolution. The way we communicate, the way we connect. We're already building smart cities, smart governments. So I was thinking, let's build smart health. And that's important for you, for your brother, for your grandson. Because of one day, we're all confronted with disease. So just imagine, what if tomorrow you are diagnosed with cancer? Envision that you walk, that you, you have the conversation with the doctor, that you leave the hospital. Once you come home, you're over the shock, you want to know as soon as possible everything about your type of cancer. You want to know, am I the only one? Are there other patients like me? With therapies that they use? And how did they respond to that? What do I do and how do I do that? These are questions that we would all have, but there are no answers. So let's build a bridge. Let's create a future where you and I would like to live in. I envision a future that moves away from inequality, that has universal access to knowledge, and a greater sense of togetherness. And the way to do this is to use our imagination. Like Einstein said, knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Knowledge will bring us from A to B, but imagination will bring us everywhere. And I believe that if we can place a man on Mars, that we can also create global access to real-world patient data. So just envision that life-saving information is right at your fingertips, that we only need our smartphone to connect with knowledge on a global scale, and that we can access global statistics to overcome diseases. And then envision a future, a future where 350 million children, like Sophie and Anna, with a so-called rare disease, are not rare anymore, because people can now connect. Envision a future where a boy in the slums of Mumbai can access this knowledge to survive too. A future where it doesn't need to take us 10 years to find a treatment, but rather 10 days. A future where Sophie survived because of access to knowledge. And if you are able to grasp this, that this is possible, if you are able to see the possibilities, we together can make what's incurable, curable. And we can save trillions of healthcare costs to save more lives. And the way to do this is actually quite simple. We need a smart system that connects your profile to the knowledge you need. And therefore, we need connectivity. And what you didn't know yet, we are all part of this solution. We're all a link in this global network. Every one of us can be the missing link to solve a disease. It's basically like crowdsourcing. 
every one of us can contribute solving deadly diseases. And we can use smart AI to run through this entire knowledge base to identify patterns to overcome diseases, patterns that we would otherwise not be able to see. And as connections between us are made instantly, each story shared contributes to increasing the collective knowledge of the world. And this is something that we can easily establish because we're grown up connected. So let's do some simple math. There are currently more than 1 billion people searching for answers, of which more than 350 million children like Sophie. Each have 10 relatives affected, which amounts up to 3.5 billion people. That's half of the world population. <coughs> so if everyone from just one community will connect with their family and one friend, we can easily connect the entire world. And you might wonder by now, how can we empower people to find the exact information they're searching for? How can we empower people to find a cure? And for this, we're building an incredible AI-powered genomic system that connects people like you, like all of us, based on their own life code, to the knowledge we need. Let me explain this to you. We all have our own life code, which is our genetic code. And this code informs us about our health, if we're carriers of disease, if we pass this on to our children and how we respond to therapies. This code defines who we are. This code is the key to connect with the knowledge that we need and therefore it's also the key to connect within this global network. And I ask you <coughs> to envision this future. What I've learned during my career and personal experience is that you need imagination, but you need to create the world that you foresee, you want to live in. So that's actually what I, together with the amazing team, I start doing. And we call it social genomics. A global network where people all over the world can upload all kinds of medical information and find the answers that they need. Connecting with people from Paris to LA and from Pakistan to Melbourne, from big crowded cities to tribes in sub-Saharan Africa. A network where doctors on a global scale are connected and a place where scientists can gather around real world patient data. So imagine if this has been available for Sophie. Sophie's parents could have connected with the parents of Anna, with the US doctor, and with the clinical trial. She would have had a better chance to survive. What I know, I deeply care about the lack of access to knowledge. I still hear my father's voice when he said, if only we would know, we could have prevented this. I've heard this a dozens of times and it still haunts me. Because I believe that it should not matter if you live in Amsterdam, in Paris, in India, wherever, we all have the same human rights. We all have the right to be in the best health condition. So students, intellectual leaders at INSEAD, and everyone listening online, you belong to the greatest collection of talents in the world. Ask yourself, should our brightest minds be more dedicated to create global access to knowledge? To help a child who is dying from diseases we can cure? I say yes. We are all a link 
and you too can help to connect the dots. In this tomorrow, we are all empowered to take our health inside our own hands. And that is something that we already can start to do today, together, here, to save a life of someone you don't know half a way around the world, a teenager in your hometown, a family member, even yourself, so that we never have to lose another Sophie again.